So I've looked at how to configure Azure Active Directory for Dersync. And one of the big things that we wanted to use with that is the Analysis Services Connector. It's a new item that's part of the public preview for uh, Power BI. And uh, what this does is it allows us to actually interact on live data on premise, as opposed to moving our data up to the cloud. So this is actually a really cool feature if you have a big model, because with the Excel workbooks and whatnot, we're limited to the 250 megabyte size. And so with setting this up on a tabular instance of analysis services, uh, we can actually live stream that data into the reports that we want on uh, in our dashboard. So what I wanted to do was go walk through how we set this up. Um, to go through the walkthrough of setting up Azure Active Directory, I've got to uh, go look at a previous post that I made on doing that um, because Azure Active Directory is a requirement for doing this, and I'll explain why in a little bit. So to get started, what we need to do is download the Analysis Services Connector. To do that, uh, we want to go to the cog in the upper left, or sorry, upper right. When we click on that, you'll see Power BI Designer Preview and you'll see Analysis Services Connector Preview. When we click on that, it will download the MSI. I've already got it downloaded, and it is here, Power BI AS Connector. And so I want to switch over to my Analysis Services box, and we will install it there. Okay, so let's go to my client box. Okay, so we're on that box, go to flats, and we'll just install it from there. I don't need to copy it over. Uh, one thing to note, if you have the existing, uh, for, the, uh, for the old service, if you have the data management gateway installed, you need to uninstall that first before you install this piece. Um, they cannot coexist. So if you're wanting to play with this, it needs to be either on a machine that doesn't have a gateway or uninstall it, uninstall the old data management gateway and install the connector at that point. And so options just give you the ability to uh, tell it where to install to, and we'll just go ahead and install. All right, so that's done. Let's, let's click on launch. Okay, so then we get the wizard to configure the connector at this point. So let's go ahead and hit next. First, we need to sign in with our Power BI account. So we'll do that. And we're going to say keep me signed in. All right, so we're signed into the Power BI account, so then we'll hit next. So now this is going to be the account that the connector connects to analysis services with. Um, so this needs to be an account that's actually listed as an admin for analysis services. So I already have an account that I created for this. Um, so if I connect to my tabular instance, if I go to properties and then security. So I've actually got this, uh, I created a uh, Power BI connector service account that I'm going to use for that purpose and I added it in as an administrator. One of the reasons I did this also is that if I go to a profiler trace I can easily see that hey this was started by way of the uh, AS connector so that way it's not like just a general service account that's used for a bunch of different things. So let's go ahead and hit OK. We'll close out of that and then we'll uh, we'll go ahead and connect to that. So. next. All right, now we can give it a name. So we'll call it give it a description. Friendly error message. And then we'll hit next. All right. Then it came up and said it was successful. We'll go ahead and hit close. So we've got the connector set up now. Let's go back to our client machine. And so now, you know, what can we do with this? So if we want to, we want to connect 
to the data and start working with that data. So what we can do is we can either click on get data up top or we can click on the plus next to data sets. Either way will get us to the same spot. So we'll do that. All right, and this brings us by default to the Excel workbook, but what we want to choose is the SQL Server Analysis Services. And then when we hit connect, it'll take us to a screen that will show us a list of the servers that are connected. And we can see the tabular instance that we, uh, or the connector that we just set up a second ago. Uh, one thing to note here is that this is kind of a different approach to the, uh, to the old service. In the old service, in order to set up a gateway or to connect to on-premise data, one of the Power BI admins actually had to do that for you. So the nice thing with this is me as an individual worker, I can set this up on my own. I don't need admin rights. There are no admin rights right now available to configure for the, for the preview. So I, I didn't need to go to anyone to do that. I own the analysis services instance. I have access to that. So I can go ahead and set this up myself. I don't need to rely on a central services for my company or, or anything like that. Um, this, is, this is a really nice improvement uh, compared to the way it used to be. So from here, we can go ahead and click on the, uh, the tabular instance that we want to connect to. You may, in your company, you may see a, a ton of these here. I know on the, the internal Microsoft tenant that we have, uh, there are a lot of tabular instances listed here. So you can use the search box here to kind of filter down and find the one that you want. Um, so, but let's go ahead and click on that. And this should present you with a list of the models that are available on the server. All right, so these are all of the models that I have available to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick the internet sales, and then we'll hit connect. All right, so now I see my the data set listed here. Let's go ahead and create a new dashboard. Call it internet sales. And we are now in the context of internet sales, so let's go ahead and explore it. All right, and so from here we can just go ahead and start uh, grabbing items to uh, to our report. Grab internet total sales. We'll go up and we'll do. Let's grab a date. Grab month name. So it looks good. All right, so that's how we can connect to tabular data on premise. Now one thing that we'll go ahead and look at is, let me show you how this is actually connecting. Let's pull up Profiler and we'll get a trace going. Just do standard. Let's go ahead and run that. Oops. All right. Go back to our client. So we'll go back and we'll discard. All right, let's do it again. So we'll just grab that. Okay. Let's go back here. Stop. Okay, so we have our profiler data. And what we can see here is um, we see that the NT username is connecting. And... Uh, that's our Power BI connector that we defined when we set up the connector itself. And then what we'll see is if we click on one of these, we can see effective username listed as uh, my actual account that comes in. And so what's going to happen is the Azure Active Directory, the DirSync pieces, that's what's actually needed to pass whatever that effective username item is across. Um, and so if you don't uh, pass that across, then you may get, or if you don't have permissions, uh, you, you would get like an access denied of some kind. So let's show that. So if we go go back here, go back, don't save. Let me uh, sign in with a different user. So here we signed in, we're signed in as Jane Doe. Got it. So if we go back to data sets, we go to analysis services, connect. We should see the tabular piece listed here. Um, this user account does not have access to the tabular instance though from a security perspective. So let's go ahead and click on that. Should get an access denied. There we go. Or 
In this case, no database is found because that user doesn't have permissions to any databases. Um, so you would have to go configure from a role perspective. This is really great for if you have an on-premise domain and we can set up the Azure uh, Active Directory DirSync um, and we can control access to the database. In the previous gateway, it was you just defined the user that was going to connect to the data source and there was no passing of permissions across. So at this point, we can actually honor the, the user that's coming in. Um, the downside is, is that the machine or the, the instance that's going in there has to be a member of that domain. So it can't be like a domain that's different from where the end users are and we don't recognize, like there's no connection there. I used to be able to do that before with the old uh, connector or with the old gateway um, where it didn't matter about the domain user as long as I had a service account that could connect to it. That's all that mattered so I could get away with stuff. Uh, but from a security perspective, this is this is much better um, because as from an IT perspective, I can secure the data and make sure that only people who have access to it can get to it. And that way, they'll, they'll see that it exists, but they won't be able to get to it or connect to that given database if they don't have permissions. So in terms of diagnostics and what can we look at for the AS connector, there's a couple things we've got. Um, so first, let's go back over to our analysis services server. Um, we already looked at one aspect of, of troubleshooting is actual profiler trace. So this will allow us to see what's coming in or not coming in um, and what credentials possibly being used. So another thing we have available to us is the event log. Let's go to event viewer. And this is similar to the old gateway. So if we go to, uh, we want to go to applications and service logs, um, not the Windows logs. So if we go in there, we can see a we can see the data management gateway. And if we click on that, we can actually see uh, possible messages from the gateway itself. Uh, this will include any error messages or something that's happening from the connector uh, piece of this. Those are really the diagnostics that are available at this time from the end user perspective. As we go forward, uh, we used in the admin center, we did have other information that was there. Those items aren't available yet for the, uh, for the new service. So hopefully we'll see additional items come available that will help diagnose potentially what's going on. For right now, we've got the event log and we've got profiler trace so that we can see what's going on. It, more than likely, you may end up hitting potential permission issues and or just general network connectivity related items. Uh, so hopefully those items can help you get to what you want to see. All right, so that's how the analysis con uh, services connector works and how you can use it in your Power BI environment to get to data that you need for a larger model than just 250 megs.